Oh, welcome to Swing Steve's Banging Beer Reviews. Drive to 100. I've reached 200. Pathetically appealing to my German audience there. 200 beer. Can you believe it? 200. Well, most people watching this, especially, especially beer reviewers, are probably thinking, well, I probably did 200 beer reviews in my first few months. And I've been at it now five years. So on the grand scheme of things, 200 isn't that much, really. But uh, to me, it's like, let me make 200 beers. And to say they've all pretty much been bargain beer reviews. Um, with a few odd exceptions of craft beers and this sort of thing. But yeah, here I am, 200 beers room. So what we've got today, I'll give you a little bit of sneaky preview then when I'm waving it around in my hand. But here we go, but, but I don't know why I bother doing this because obviously you see what video it is on the titles as it comes up anyway. I'll do the little ba 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 anyway. So, must be the most widely distributed uh, bitter in the UK surely it, I, I don't think there's any more any more anything that's more popular well not popular but more widely distributed I think is the word as John Smith's uh, the most I mean it's it's, it's we've got repetition for this being smooth and really easy to drink um, brewed in Tadcaster which is in Yorkshire which is also home of the Samuel Smith's Brewery and Sam Smith's famous for their chocolate uh, stout oh amazing so, uh, Sam, uh, Sam Smith's pubs Anywhere that's local to like Yorkshire, Lincolnshire, uh, maybe even Nottinghamshire. Uh, uh, I don't know how far out they go, the Sam Smith's pubs, but I'll know that they're owned by the brewery and they do exceptionally cheap beers. Uh, or ruled under an iron fist of their uh, head brewer, of the, of the, the head of the brewery. Um, it was very Dickensian in his, in his sort of ideals, very old fashioned. You can't go into their pubs and swear, which is good, which is fair enough. You can't go into their pubs and have music on. You can't go into their pubs and be loud. There's lots of things you can and can't do. And sometimes when you ask the bar staff, they're actually, you can tell they're ruled under the iron fist of this this um, sort of uh, Dickensian-esque sort of um, old-fashioned entrepreneur, I suppose. And he's, yeah, they're actually scared to talk about him because it's almost like he, he does pop into the pubs every now and again and if you don't like what he sees he shuts the pubs down anyway that being said one thing I will say about Sam Smith's pubs they've all got this very traditional sort of um, they've all got a very similar everything's made by the brewery so all the, all the beer all the even all the other alcoholic beverages are all owned by the brewery but anyway I'm going on about Sam Smith's here we, we, this is um, this is John Smith's so John Smith's um, God well, I don't know where, I don't know if they ever get together and have like board meetings and think what should we do this year? Um, I don't know. Let's brew some more John Smith, shall we? Because they just don't do anything else. They did a Golden Ale, which I, I have reviewed, and I will pop down on my uh, little thing that comes up at the end of the video. It won't, I think it was like my fourth review, where John Smith actually did something other than John Smith. They did like a Golden Ale. But one thing I will say about John Smith is they got me into real beer, and it's not because of this beer. They also do another uh, keg beer called John Smith's Magnet. Hence why you've got the little magnet there, uh, which is an absolutely, it's a beautiful uh, draft beer. So if you ever get the chance or the opportunity to try that beer, it's it's, it's not as, I've not seen it for a long time now, which is a real which is a real shame because it it's like the other than this, you know, uh, that's all you're going to get from John Smiths if that has if they've stopped doing that now. But that was a lovely, lovely beer, uh, and I used to it when I when, when I was a, when I was a student uh, of a certain age, shall we say, uh, and I could get served when I was. When I was uh, quite, when I was, I'll, I'll not say too much, but uh, I looked old for my age. So I could get served in a pub, and they used to have John Smith's Magnet on it. It was fantastic. And because I think I, I went for something like a John Smith's Magnet, they probably thought, oh yeah, he's older than he is. Um, but maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I do waffle. But anyway, this is John Smith's, brewed in Tadcaster, Yorkshire beer. Um, so yeah, I mean, God, last time I, last time I, I, I'll tell you what, I am a little bit already dubious about is the price of this beer now it was one it was three pounds 69 for four cans and the 440 cans and it looks big because it's got a widget in it so it adds that really smooth factor which we'll see when i pour it in a minute but it's um yeah i think that's quite expensive when you think about what what you can you can get now for that price especially in places like aldi um, and I'm not being funny, but it, it's a pretty plain beer. And if it, unless it's unless it's gone up, unless it, they've, they've had a massive, rapid revolution in the John Smith's beer factory, and I'm going to drink this and go, wow, uh, I, I doubt that's going to happen. So yeah, I think that's quite expensive. I was expecting maybe two ninety nine when I went into some, but it's not. It's, it's three pounds sixty nine, which I think is quite pricey. But anyway, let's let's get in there. Let's get in there. Yorkshire Smooth Ale, it calls itself. So on the can and smoke, I'm getting. 
a sweet malty um, slight hoppiness to it slight fresh hoppiness almost got like a slight hedgerowiness actually when I first opened it but that's quickly gone you know and it's almost like a bit of a dying like a really like <sighs> sort of like a very uninspiring maltiness to it reminds me of like what I think um, directors god I know I always slam that beer but directors last time I had that it's just so lacklustre and this is what it smells like anyway let's get her in so it's as smooth as you like and it goes in there I can probably pour it like that it don't really matter how I pour it I can pour it from right up here if I want to or down there so it's always going to be the same got a lovely velvetiness to it so it's really tightly, it's just a nitro beer, everything's really tightly put, put packed together, the head's nice and smooth, everything's like almost, gen, it's like a, gen, like a modified beer, genetically modified beer. I don't think genetic's the right word, but uh, yeah, you know what I mean. So anyway, so this is like a, a toffee, toffee coloured beer. Um, what's it called? It's like an amber beer. It does, does it? No. Yeah, it's slightly off white, the head. And you're getting a metallic -y smell from that. You're not getting much at all. It's just like, like cheap. I don't know. It tastes a bit like cheap homebrew, dodgy homebrew. Where you're getting almost like a bit of a, a yeasty maltiness. Anyway, here we go. Well, you can see how easy it is to drink. It's better on the flavour, actually. The thing is, you've got to take a big gulp like that. I must admit, I do like smooth beers. I like nitro beers. And it has got that going for it. It is really smooth. It is incredibly smooth, just like it says it is. Um, so you're getting like a nice breadiness. Slight sweetness. Um, a little bit of a biscuitness on the back end. Um, there's no long lingering finish to this. It's got this weird sort of... Oh, almost like a chemical taste that you're getting on the back of your tongue though. It's almost like it comes from the hops a little bit, the bitterness. But then it's almost like it gets a little bit sour, I think's the word I'm looking for. Which isn't particularly pleasant. It's one of them. If I drunk that, it's got a little bit of a fruit in it. It's got like a um, currant, maybe a bit of a slight... You, you have to be hard fine to get it, but there's a bit of a, like a raisininess on it. So I've cut the whole, whole bag of mashings in there now. So easy to drink, I must admit. Yeah, a bit metallic. I'd say that's probably better, better than Directors. The last time I tried it anyway. Swish it round. No, you can't get much, you're not gonna get much through the head anyway. There's a wasp on me now, so I hope it doesn't sting me. I'm gonna try and walk outside and come back in. If the wasp follows me or not, let's come back over there. It's like if you were a wasp, why would you follow someone around that's miles bigger than you? Like a big giant. It's like us seeing a big, a big like. It's like being at war and uh, trying to chase a KV tank coming over Soviet Russia. You know what I mean? Oh, let's go and chase that. It's massive. Yeah. Anyway, maybe because it can sting, it thinks it can get better of me, which it probably would do. Because um, I'll probably have an allergic, I'm really allergic to everything these days, so I'll probably have an allergic reaction and my face will puff up. Mm. Right, so this beer, yeah, I, the, the more I get down it, the more I think it's cack. It's pretty, it's pretty nasty on the back end, if I'm completely honest with you. Um, there's nothing much to say about it. It's a, dis it's a disappointing beer review, but I can't believe I've not reviewed it yet, which is, I had to do it for my 200th review. But it's not disappointing because it's what I expected. I think the price is, pff, I think the daft's charging that much for it. See, it's, it's almost nearly a quid a tin, that, for 440. Pff, rubbish. There's no, there's no quality in this beer whatsoever. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna slam any of the drinks because there is a purpose for it. Because when I go to parties and stuff, or if I go to, if I go to a barbecue or something, I'll happily drink this in garden. But, I, but, yeah, after one of these, it's, it's got this awful chemicalness at the back of my mouth. Like spent grain, you know, uh, it's got that really. You, everything just tastes cheap. Just che tastes really cheap, and, you know. So where does it rank then? Is it drinkable? I don't think it's drinkable. That 
I don't think it's barely drinkable. I think it's actually worse. I, the, the stuff I got from Tesco's is better than this. The, the Morrison's, the Morrison stuff's better than this. Um, oh, quite a bit better actually. Ah, God, I'd give that. Uh, undrinkable. Is it disgusting? It's not. It's not quite disgusting. It's undrinkable though. Undrinkable. She's a shame, and I'm not a slammer of cheap beer, as you know, because I review cheap beer. But this is bad. This is bad. It went in, in the grand scheme of things. I think this is poor beer. <clears throat> but I'm not. I don't think it's. Un, I don't think it's. I think it's undrinkable. <laughs> but I don't think it's disgusting. You know. I think uh, by this day's standards, it's pretty undrinkable. That. So I'm going to say it gets. Um, it gets a three point three out of ten for me. Three point. Let's round it to a three point three. Nice even number. So round about the bottom of a undrinkable beer, really. I mean, it's. I will finish this off, and I've got another few ones to get through. But uh, for the price as well, it's not that cheap. It's not that cheap. In fact, I'm going to knock a, a bit more off. Three point one out of ten. Yeah, three point one. It's good. Yeah, for the for the price. I mean, have I given something else? Three point one. Might have done. I'm going to take a bit more off because I think it's quite expensive for what it is. You know. Sorry, John Smith, and I know it's Yorkshire. But it's, it's not very good. Simple as that. So I've been swinging Steve. Uh, let me know what you think about John Smith's. Let me know what people think around the country. And I'm sure some people will, be, will criticise me. And that's what my moment's criticism. If you've got something you want to say. And you think that I'm wrong when I talk about his beer. That's fine. Um, I mean I, w I would say I've got. <laughs> a majority of beer reviewers. That I think have reviewed this. Have taken a, a dislike. In, oh, uh, not a dislike. Well. I've not not been I've not reviewed it too fondly, shall we say? Even the ones that are quite um, generous, like me. I think I'm quite a generous beer reviewer, really. I know I, I know I, there's certain things I do dive for. If I think I think you've got to think about it relative to other beers of that price or that standard, you know, of, of that price or that supermarket, you know. And this is poor. Simple as that. So it gets a three point one out of ten for me. I've been swinging, Steve. Uh, please let me know what you think. I'll see you on the next review. Bye.